So we have a community theater uses the function and it, the equation for it is there to model the profit in dollars expected in a weekend when the tickets to a comedy show are priced at D dollars each. Um, write and solve an equation to find the prices at which the theater would earn $2,000 in profit from the comedy show each weekend. So P of D has an inflection notation that's a little bit helpful. The P stands for what in this equation? It stands for profit. Um, and then the D stands for what? Dollars. And it's the dollar amount that the tickets would cost. So if we're solving for when the profit is $2,000, am I going to plug that into the D? Yes, no, maybe. So some are saying yes. If D is for the cost of a ticket, it doesn't really sound reasonable that a ticket would cost $2,000. So I'm not going to plug it into the D. I'm going to plug it into the P of D, which was my profit. So that's my output. If it wants to know when the profit would be $2,000, then I'm going to set this equation equal to $2,000. All right, so that would be step one. And then to solve it, really, you could do, there's a ton of different methods that we learned. What method do you think would be best for this one? What method do you want to use to solve this one? Would you want to do factoring? What did you say, Caitlin? So she's saying quadratic formula. All right, now my question was, would you want to do factoring? You could, but I wouldn't recommend it. The numbers are pretty large in this one. Um, the other one was completing the square. If you remember all of those steps, you know, go on with your bad self. But um, again, there's factoring in that too. So maybe that one wouldn't be as wise. So solving it with quadratic formula would probably be best. And I do also provide that formula. So that one would be a good one to use. And there are times where a quadratic formula might be a little more inconvenient, but on this one, it seems fine to use. Um, in order to use quadratic formula, what has to be true about the equation? Daniel, you're not using your headphones, put them away. Yeah, I think you are. Like, 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 All right, what's step one in using quadratic formula? So that would not be step one, but good try. That is a step, plugging in the numbers. Before I plug in the numbers, I have to make sure of this. What is it? Sorry, what was that? Okay, is it in order? Gavin? That one side is equal to zero. That one side is equal to zero, and that is not currently happening right now. Um, what side would it probably be easier to make equal to zero? The left side, because there's fewer stuff on the left side. So how can I make 2,000 zero? Subtract, and whatever you do on one side. Good. So now on the left, it's equal to zero. On the right, combine like term. So there's only one B squared. There's only one B term. But here I have two single numbers. What's negative 800 minus 2,000? Negative 2,800. 
now that it's equal to zero, I can identify my A, B, and C properly and then plug into the formula. So what's my A in this one? Don't tell me table three, what's my A? The need by my two options is not in the right spot. So those two are my two. But table three, what is my A? This is painful. We are testing tomorrow. All I'm asking you is what A is. Okay. All right, table three, you're not off the hook. Anthony? Negative five. So then table three, what's my B? What did you say? 395 is correct. Um, let's see. Table five, what is my C? Negative 2,800. Because if you had not moved this to the other side and you said it was negative 800, you would not get the right answer. All right, so this is correct for A, B, and C. Then from there, plug it into your formula. Normally I scroll up, but if I do, everything's going to be like, it's not going to be so bear with me. Um, what goes here where my mouse is? Table six, plugging into the formula 395, and then plus or minus square root of what goes here? Table seven. Three hundred ninety-five, and then it will be squared minus four times what table eight? Negative five, and then times what table nine? Okay, good. Um, all over two times what table one? Positive or negative? Negative five. All right, so I would not skip that step. I'm sure some of it you can do in your head, like the two times negative five. I would just wait till we simplify. So like here, there's no double negative, but it is becoming a negative 395 because of that minus B. It's gonna be plus or minus. Um, do you guys remember what under the square root symbol is called? The discriminant, good. So the discriminant, everything under the square root, I would recommend just putting in Desmos. Don't make your life harder. Just type it in exactly how you see it on your paper with the parentheses and everything. All right, so B squared minus four AC. Um, so this is what I get probably not going to be a perfect square. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it as this number under the square root symbol. We can put it all together later. Um, but, so that's 100,025. And that's all over two times negative five, which is negative 10. Um, remember that there's two answers, at least normally when there is, um, whatever you call it, ex not exponential functions, quadratic functions. So your two answers you get from separating this plus and minus. So I'm going to put this in my calculator. And sorry, I'm going to switch the screen. I can't split screen like I normally do because it'll just mess everything up. But um, it's going to be with a fraction bar, negative 395 plus the square root of that large number we found, 
all over negative 10. And so we get this as an answer and then same thing, put it down, but then change that plus to minus. So I have these two answers. I can tell you that on your test, the numbers will be nice whole numbers. On these ones, we just changed the, um, the numbers for your practice. But these are your answers. You might just have to round, since we're talking about dollars, um, we might just have to round it to like two spots just for our, um, what do you call it, study guide. So my answers are about 7.87 and about 71.13 for the study guide. 7.87 and 71.13. Um, so yeah, you will have two answers for part A. It'll be your... Um, answers whatever way you choose to solve it. So you do have to show your reasoning. One thing I will say is that if it were me, I probably would have just used the graphing calculator and typed it in when it's in standard form equal to zero. So I would have put negative five X squared minus um, 395 or plus 395 minus 2800 and then on my graph or it's not showing me maybe i need to put it equal to y or i need the other x okay that was y um then on my graph where would i look for the solutions my x intercepts and aren't those the same decimals that we got yes now if you solve it this way have don't just say I put it in Desmos because you won't get full credit for that explanation. You could say um, graph, so first set it equal to zero, and then graph the zeros are the x-intercepts. Therefore, this value and this value would give me the profit of $2,000. So good questions on that one. All right, any other questions from any part of your study guides? Six on the puzzle piece, in case you guys wanna follow along as well. All right, so make sure, friendly reminder tomorrow, bring your Chromebook, have it charged when you come in or before you come in. Don't forget your charger. All right, so this one, originally there was a typo in one of the answers. So in case yours isn't updated, because it probably won't unless you submit it and start a new attempt, that's not the answer I just clicked. Um, but there was a typo. So that could have led to why some of you were confused. Um, but for this one, it says the method of completing the square can be used to transform this equation into this form. So in one of the steps in completing the square, it looks like that. And it wants to know what the values would be for P and Q. So that's why even though we taught you all those different methods, that's why you need to know the steps for all of them because this one's specifically for completing the square. So if this is my given equation, what's the first step in completing the square? That would be the first step for factoring. So for completing the square, the first step is different. If you need to peek at your notes right now, that's fine. Just know that you won't get your notes tomorrow. So whatever you're having to look up, you need to know like, maybe I should make a flashcard for that. Have it memorized before tomorrow. Um, so step one for completing the square, actually in completing the square, it's the one where it doesn't want it equal to zero. It's the one where it wants you to, it does want you to rewrite it. You guys remember how to rewrite it?
if the one that doesn't want it to be in standard form right from the beginning and wants you to do something with it. All right, so it wants it with a C alone on one side. So what can I see over here? And how do I make the four go to the other side? Whatever you go one side. Okay, good. So that cancels. I get x squared minus 8x equals negative 4. So that's step one. That doesn't look like where they want me to stop at. So I have to go. So after step one, do you guys remember what we do? So it would be in your notes. I'm going to prove it to you. Yeah, when you're not like, where are these minutes? Like, come down. All right, lesson 13 and 12, we did completing square. All right, and those steps were right here. You had to write them down now. So we rewrote it, and then we need to take half of B, square it, and add it to both sides. So over here, which one is my B? B is negative eight with half of negative eight. And then let me put this somewhere. Okay, so negative four, what's negative four squared? It is not, that'll be maybe square root of four, but negative four squared is 16. So this I'm going to add to both sides. Why you might ask? Well, we went over why when we did lesson 12. Um, so feel free to go and watch that if you really want to know why, but it's a step. All right, take half of B square, add it to both sides. On the left, that makes a perfect square trinomial. We're going to factor that here. Um, but on the right, what's negative four plus 16? 12. So, Step two was taking half of B and then squaring it, and then add to both sides. All right, so now step three is two, and I'm not making this up it's from the notes, factor the perfect square trinomial. So factor the trinomial, because it's a perfect square, I should have the same thing here and here. So set up your diamond. What multiplies to 16 adds to negative 8. Mm -hmm. Negative 4 plus 16. And negative four. And for these, what I've noticed is that it usually ends up being whatever half of B was. What I've noticed. So then when you write it, because it's the same thing here and here, you can write it as x minus 4 in parentheses squared equal to 12. And now there is another step after that. It's basically solved for x. But look, doesn't this step look like where they want me to stop at? It should. So then what position or what number is in the position that the p is in? A positive 4, actually. Because if it was a negative 4, that double negative, it would look different, right? So when plugging in a positive four there, and then the Q is what? 12. So that's why the answer should have been this one. And if it looks different than what's on your screen, it might have been because you started it before I fixed the typo. So just know on your test, it'll be like this. It'll be X minus a number, but that number is actually positive that you're plugging in. Um, and then Q is just normal. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Questions on this one? Questions on others? Kaden? Uh, okay. So question seven. All right, Harrison picked a pick ball off the roof of a gymnasium. So that's one of those projectile motion problems, if you remember those. Um, that equation represents the height and B of the kickball above the ground after T seconds. How long does it take for the kickball to hit the ground? So 
since quadratic formulas are usually U-shaped, and because it's a kickball, it's probably this type of U. Um, if this were on a coordinate plane, where would the ground be? On the x-axis. So this part, if it touches the x-axis, is probably like where it started. So like before it was kicked. And here's where it was after it was hit. And they want to know how long it took for it to hit the ground. So if we're comparing height and time, what would the x-axis represent? Height or time? Time, because x is almost always time. And then y is height. So in that case, when I'm looking at whatever that coordinate is, um, it goes x, y, so t comma height. Whatever number is in the t position should be the time that it was. So, and you could solve this other ways too, but I honestly think graphing might be the easiest for this one. Um, so I'm going to type that into Desmos. So negative 16x squared, because it doesn't read t's plus 45x, plus 24. I'm just making sure I typed it in right. Um, looking at my x-intercepts, and usually what happens if you solved it algebraically too, you see that one of them is negative and one of them is positive. Can time be negative? No, so even though that is a solution that X could be to make it zero, it doesn't make sense because time can't be negative. So you would go with this one. And it says round to the hundredth. How many spots after the decimal is that? Two spots. So here, um, look to the right, if that number is one, what's gonna be my answer, 3.28 or 3.27? 3.27 and then it's representing seconds. So that's what it would be for. Oh, sorry. There? Oh. All right, others. From either portion. Mm -hmm. Number three on the constructive response. Okay. So yeah, we did part A earlier for number three. So hopefully you guys all wrote that down. Great. Um part B says at what price would the theater make the maximum profit? So remember that the function notation was. P of D. So which one is normally my input, the P or the D? The D, because input is X usually, and this is where the X would normally go. So B is representing dollars, and that would be on my X axis. And P is representing what? Profit, and that would be on my Y axis. So at what price would the theater make the maximum profit? And what is the maximum profit? Now, we're not going to use the equation we set equal to zero in the last one. We're going to use the given equation. So for that one, it was, let me scroll up for a second. It was P of D equals negative 5D squared plus 395D minus 800. All right, I almost wish they reversed the order of A and B so that it's like you're not wanting to use the one from the previous problem. But we're trying to figure out where the maximum profit would be. So in that case, I don't think you can solve this one algebraically. I think you could really only solve it graphically. So say the graph looks something like this. I don't know what the graph looks like. Where would the maximum be on the graph? At the very top, also known as our vertex. And it'll be um, at what price would the theater make the maximum profit? So that's where the Y is the greatest. 
Um, we want to know what dollar amount, what the D is, that gives us that maximum profit. So we don't care what the maximum, well, it does actually ask what the maximum profit is. So we need both parts of the vertex. So then typing it in, negative 5x squared plus, hold on, let me put a 5 there, plus 395x minus 800. Okay, let's see. Um, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Okay, so I typed it in right, looking to the very top of it. So I'm gonna have to zoom out. Sorry, I guess this is a really tall graph. Okay, so there's the top of it. Let me zoom in more on that part. Okay. So very top of it, Desmos does let you click on it. So that 39.5, um, is that my profit or is that the ticket cost? That's my ticket cost. So for the D, my dollar amount that it needs to cost would be $39.50, write it as, make it look like money. And then the maximum profit is $7,001.25. And if it says explain your reasoning, you could talk about, you can maybe draw a picture like I did. You can talk about how the vertex gives the maximum profit. The X value at the vertex is this, the Y value is that. Explain what each part means. Okay, good there. All right, and I think that's all we have time for, unless someone has like a really quick question. If you still have questions later, you could email, you could, I don't know, watch the videos again, do something, but come prepared tomorrow. We're testing tomorrow.